Welcome to the Group Dentistry Now Show, the voice of the DSO industry. Kim Larson and Bill Newman talk to industry leaders about their challenges, successes, and the future of group dentistry. Visit groupdentistrynow.com for more DSO analysis, news, and events. Looking for a job or have a job to fill? Visit joindso.com. We hope you enjoy today's show. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Group Dentistry Now Show. I'm Bill Newman and uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And we're gonna start the new year off right. We have a special guest with us today, Bob Fontana, who is the founder and the CEO of Aspen Dental Management. So, hey, Bob, first off, Happy New Year. Bill, Happy New Year to you too. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, Th- thanks, thanks for being here. And, um, you know, we were, we've got a, got a lot to talk about today. You all have been uh, very busy in 2020 and it looks like 2021 is gonna be uh, an interesting year for, for the industry and for Aspen Dental Management in particular. Bob Fontana, he founded Aspen Dental Management back in, in 1998. And um, if, if this is correct, it seems like you've been in the dental industry since 95, right? So you started yeah, yeah. off with a, another DSO uh, that actually uh, East Coast Dental Management that merged with Upstate Dental and then that became Aspen Dental Management yeah. in, in 98. So, yeah. so, so you've been around for a while in the industry. I have. I've got the battle wounds to prove it too. <laughs> and, and they were not called DSOs back then. I think DPMs. Okay, DPM. Dental practice management companies, I think is what, what we used to go by. And uh, we, were, we were talking just before we started to, um, to record this, and there may be a, a new acronym coming out soon, uh, at, at least for, for what you're all involved in with Aspen Dental Management's involved in, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, so um, ADMI is now one of the largest and fastest growing health and wellness business support organizations in the U.S. with more than 1,000 practices supported. And this is news to me. I just got this about probably 30 minutes ago. So I knew part of this, but not, not the whole picture. Um, so 1,000 practices supported across three categories. Dental care we know of. Uh, urgent care I did know of, although you, maybe not everybody knew that. Uh, and then this is new medical aesthetics. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So really exciting things that you're doing at Aspen supporting these different uh, categories in healthcare. So a little bit more here. Uh, Bob pioneered an operating model that drove Aspen Dental's successful continuous expansion entirely through de novo growth to more than 870 offices in 42 states today. Um, And so this this hurt my head when I read this. So uh, opening a new location every four days. So that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that, you're, pretty, you're pretty busy. Um, and then um, accelerating growth through a series of strategic acquisitions, Well Now Urgent Care, which we mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, seven locations when acquired in 2016 and now 85 locations in four states, putting it among the top 10 urgent care providers in the U.S., and plans to do the same with the medical aesthetics category after the recent acquisition of the largest single med spa clinic in the US. Got a lot, lot of questions for you. Uh, 25 years in leadership experience, like I mentioned, and um, was a founding member of the uh, ADSO, the, uh, which used to be the Dental Group Practice Association. Was it the right. yeah, DBD yeah. Dental Group Practice Association, right? That's what I don't even remember something like that. Like <laughs> I said earlier, lots of acronyms in this industry. So now it's the ADSO, uh, and then also on the uh, board of the National Veterinary Association, uh, MedExpress Urgent Care, and um, so yeah, a lot lot going on there. Uh, big big bio, and yeah, I was just reading something uh, probably from about four or five days ago. You finished your year up strong, eight practice openings in the last two weeks. And we talked about the total being right around 870 uh, in 2020, 59 openings. Uh, and those last couple were in Idaho, um, Missouri, uh, West Virginia, Maryland, Louisiana, North Carolina, another one in North Carolina and Oregon. So 42 states, you, you all are very, very busy. We're, we're, we're really busy now, there's no doubt about it, but it's a good busy, you know, we're really fortunate to be in this category. Uh, we love where we're at as a company and we feel really good about our plans going forward for sure. So, so let's talk a little bit about, um, maybe give a little bit of background. I mentioned it in your bio when I introduced you. Uh, 
East Coast Dental Management, right? So that was 1995. So let's talk a little bit about maybe the, the history of, of Aspen Dental Management, and then we can talk a little bit about all the recent uh, uh, acquisitions and, and some of the uh, other, you know, Well sure. Now and some other things sure. you're up to. I was fortunate enough to get going with East Coast Dental. The business that I started with had been sold in upstate New York, and I had a chance to sort of merge my business with that business. Uh, and take over the reins. And uh, we changed over to Aspen Dental in 1998. Uh, and as you said earlier, you know, we've been really on this de novo strategy in part because we really understand who we are. We really understand who the patient is. And that's really led us to an operating model that works. Um, you can't do de novos and you certainly can't open a new store every four days, new office every four days, if you don't understand where to put them and understand how to go to market. And so Understanding the consumer was a really, I think, important insight early on, and that's really sort of led the way to our growth uh, over the last 20-something years. Yeah, so we, um, with with this growth, obviously need to build out the support. And uh, so you're, right now, you're, you're in upstate New York as we speak right now. Yeah. Uh, so that's where the headquarters is, but then you also have a support center in Chicago, uh, two, two headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, well, we actually have four support centers. So we have a couple here in Syracuse. We have about 600 people in the uh, Syrac Syracuse support centers. But we, because talent is so important to us, you know, the business is getting sophist you know, pretty sophisticated. It's large. I think on a combined basis, there's 14,000 people in the organization now between all the brands. And talent is really critical. So when you think about what we're trying to do, I mean, we have a great model. Uh, Syracuse isn't the easiest place to, to get talent. So we made a decision uh, a few years back and said, listen, if we could be in the center of the country, there's lots of talent. Chicago is the third largest city in the country. Uh, and so we made a decision to actually make Chicago our headquarters. Uh, and so we dipped our toe in Chicago, built out a facility, which you've, I think, visited uh, a year or so ago. Um, and we did that, um, I think, in large part in 18. Uh, and it's gone really well and the business has done really well. And so now actually we're under construction under a new for a new practice support center uh, in Chicago. And we also have a practice support center in the Phoenix market as well. So it make, makes sense. East Coast, yeah. central part of the, the country yeah. and then then the West Coast. So, yeah, yeah, I was out there about a year ago and you've already cool. owned, which was a great space or is a great sp space. You've already outgrown that. And um, I guess you're staying relatively close to where that original sports Just center a couple was. blocks down yeah, it's a great spot in chicago i think it was one of the fastest growing micro markets in the country um uh the fulton market uh it's great you know listen at the end of the day it's it's a support center but it's also a state-of-the-art training facility and i think as you know we bring all the doctors into chicago all the hygienists all the managers field teams and all those things and so again at the heart of what we do is really talent um, our culture our purpose all those things that are really important to us and our brand um, and bringing people in to level set on those things and having the right onboarding and learning development programs are really critical for us. And so making these investments for us, particularly in a de novo strategy, is really critical. Uh, and so uh, we continue to make investments in our teams and, and infrastructure in a way that continues to allow us to grow the way we do. Excellent. So, uh, you know, we did have, uh, I'd say about, about a month or two ago, we had John Murphy on, on the podcast as well. And he talked a little bit about you know, that dealing with COVID and, and from a recruitment retention standpoint, kind of what was going on there and, and really having to um, you know, think a little bit differently as, as just about any company, I think, not just in the dental space, but but yeah. overall um, was doing. And, you know, you opened up your uh, online training to, to all all dentists, right? So they didn't know on hygienists and anyone, right. which was a bold move. And I think probably, um, you know, really helped a lot of people out, um, you know, not just Aspen, you know, employees, but, right. but overall, um, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So, you know, uh, we saw each other in late February when I was out in Chicago and then first week in March, all of a sudden, you know, everything shuts down. Yeah. Uh, so you did, did some pivoting there, but you were still, still busy. Um, so first thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is, um, the clear choice management services acquisition. So was that, First off, you know, why clear choice? And was this something that you were working on pre-COVID? And then talk a little bit about doing a, a, a big acquisition like that during a time when a lot of people were kind of hunkered down, just trying to survive. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, we're fortunate to have a, well, going back to COVID, I'd say this, I mean, 
as we said earlier, no one knew what to do, what to, and how to really behave. And so for us, it was really sort of, um, you know, making sure we're sort of protecting the business, helping the practice owners in our business really be, you know, sort of hunker down and be really, really thoughtful about the things that we're doing, particularly back in March and April, when it was really sort of the, like what I sometimes refer to as the darkest period of COVID. Um, and we still handled through that pretty well. And the business, our business is healthy. We have a lot of conviction on what we do. We don't think dentistry is gonna go away. Uh, we love this category. Uh, we have really the only true national brand. And so we had a lot of conviction to invest, continue to invest uh, in the business, even um, even in, in times where I think it was really challenging, um, particularly in April. But we knew coming out of it, we felt like we could be stronger and we felt like we could be opportunistic. And so, as you know, we're a de novo company, uh, but we started to really think about, you know, asymmetrical growth in a way that I think is is important to us. And so uh, we were interested in Clear Choice. We knew Kevin and the team there for a long time. They're great operators. Um, and we started we started talking to them earlier, sort of pre-COVID, um, um, but really picked up those discussions, you know, what I'll call in the late summer, early fall of this year. Um, and we're pleased. I mean, they are a great team. It's a great brand. They're a national brand as well. So it sort of fits in with who we are. There's a lot of similarities in the patient base. Uh, so we're super excited. And, and listen, we've looked at a lot of DSOs over the year and I, there's some great groups out there, but really none that really matched, I think, who we are and what's important to our DNA. And, but Clear Choice, um, I think is a special one for us that we think is a great fit for us. So how many, how many locations does Clear Choice have right now? Yeah, so Clear Choice has about 65 locations. They operate in about 27 states. Um, headquartered out of Denver, actually heading there next week to see Kevin and the team. Um, but we're thrilled. I mean, listen, they're the leader in fixed uh, full arch restorations. They provide a great service, a high-end service, um, and they're the best at it. And they're the largest provider of implants in that category. So what's interesting, I think, for, for maybe you and, and the viewers, it's Aspen is the largest provider of removal prosthetics. So we're seeing a lot of a similar, very similar patient base in the sense they have very, they have a lot of periodontal disease, a lot of challenges. Um, and, and as the Aspen practices and doctors continue to do more implants, um, what better way to sort of get into that um, and with a, in a more um, significant way um, by acquiring, you know, the leader in the market. And that's what, uh, that's what led us to really buckling down and getting clear, clear, clear choice over the goal line. And, and again, we're thrilled. We really are. Are they in any states that Aspen currently isn't in? I think there's three states, um, if I recall, I think there's three states that are not. So I think on a combined basis now with clear choice, I think we're now over, um, I think we're in 45 states on a combined basis, 42, and then the three states that we don't cross over. So I think a total of 45 states now. Okay. And was there, was their model de novo as well, or did they do any acquisitions? Oh, they're de novo as well. They got a great model. It, again, what's interesting going back to our DNA, I think they know their patient really, really well. Um, and again, it's a very similar patient base. What's interesting is we put through roughly, you know, call it, we get maybe in our funnel bill, we get roughly 75,000 inquiries for pay, new patients every single week. And they get around 10,000. So when you combine the power of that funnel across the country, there's significant opportunity to sort of work synergistically through those funnels because we have a lot bigger coverage at almost 900 locations across the country. There are 65. And so there's a lot of patients that they can't service, even though they're a national marketer. And I think there's real opportunity for them. And, and by the way, just all the sort of collaboration between our doctors uh, thinking about, you know, the, the special opportunity that we think we can have in, in plants. Yeah, really super interesting. Um, so, so clear, so clear choice. Um, what are the thoughts there as far as, so, so the, the deals officially done. done. So done. You, you've got uh, Aspen dental management and then you've got clear choice management services. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're both supporting. So Aspen supporting, Aspen Dental Management supporting Aspen Dental Practices, yeah. Yeah. and then Clear Choice Management Services is supporting Clear Choice uh, implant that's centers. That's right. Yeah. 
So think about it like this, think about like they're sort of Topco, right? And that's ADMI and we're sort of a shared services company. And we have all these core capabilities that we think are leverageable across different modalities, across different brands. Um, and so when you start to think about, we have a team focused on Aspen, the Aspen brand. There's a team, you know, Kevin and the Clear Choice team overseeing and supporting the Clear Choice brand. We have Dr. Radford who now um, has built that, that you know, urgent care business uh, from seven locations, as you mentioned now to 85 locations and he oversees and runs uh, their support teams. And then we have Melissa Rogney, who is the president and founder of the medical aesthetics business, Rejuve, who oversees um, and, and, and leads that, that team and that side of the business as well. So lots going on for sure. Um, and that's why I was saying earlier, sort of joking with you earlier, uh, yeah, we're a DSO, but it's getting, it's, it's getting to be a little bit more uh, broader healthcare. So you mentioned uh, HSO, right? Health Services yeah, Organization. I, I don't know, but yeah, I'm not. I don't know if that's the one we're going with, but there's. It's definitely. It's definitely bleeding over. Yeah, that seems pretty clear cut, but uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> that, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, all right, so I mean, do you back to Clear Choice, and then then I, I definitely want to spend time on uh, the other uh, healthcare verticals that you're involved in now. But um, I mean, what? With COVID, I mean, did that throw any, you know, wrinkles in as far as this acquisition? It's, uh, I mean, probably made it a little bit more difficult to do on-site visits and in person or were you oh, yeah. to overcome we that? go through the normal due diligence process. I mean, there was really, you know, but, but with, you know, the interesting thing here, Bill, is we already had a relationship with the Clear Choice team. We knew that brand really well. Um, and, you know, we did what we could do virtually. So it was a little different for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, again, we were really close and we think they're a great team. Uh, they've proven that their business runs really, really well. They got great providers providing a great service. Um, and again, leaders in that category. So, you know, we're thrilled. I, I think 2020 will go down as a really transformative year for us. I mean, it was a great year despite all the challenges. Um, it was a, um, again, as I said, it's a transformative year for us. So we're, th we're thrilled to be where we're at. Uh, we've got leading brands in the dental dental category that we're super excited to continue to support and grow. Um, and we're excited, obviously, with WellNow and, and Rejuve. So let's talk about WellNow. So this sure. has been uh, tw since 2016. I, I think I had word of it from um, somebody early on. And um, it was kind of interesting. So they they were, um, I guess, are in upstate New York, right? That's yeah. where the, the is that, can I call that the headquarters for WellNow or? <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's changing too. It's, okay. it's, it's probably bleeding more towards Chicago as well. But yes, founded here in upstate New York. Got it. So yeah. that was something. Now, what was the kind of the, the reasoning? What's the thought process? You looked at urgent care and thought this this made sense. And uh, how does that relate to to Aspen Dental Management and, and, and Dentistry? Or does it? Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Well, it does. It's sort of interesting, right? Maybe not on the surface, but it's it's so much more than dentistry, right? So when you think about what we do and the core capabilities that we, we have that underpins and supports the business. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be on the board, as you mentioned, with MedExpress um, and learned a lot about the category. And, and, and MedExpress was a leader in the category, still is. And we sold that business to United Healthcare back in 2014. So I had a lot of interest in the space, you know, got pretty familiar with it. Um, and then and then I had a chance to see this small platform in upstate New York. And so I called cold called Dr. Radford, who founded the business. He's a great leader. He had a great model, really, really focused on service. Um, and he's just he started to grow a great platform it was small, seven locations and and said, listen, you know, here's what we're good at. Um, you, you obviously understand the urgent care business, but we have all these core capabilities and how do we go to market? You know, how we, you know, find the right retail, you know, locations, how we build them out. You know, when we start to think about sort of all the front end components, the marketing and, and, you know, hiring the team and developing the team. And then you start to think about the back end between finance and HR and IT and revenue cycle management, insurance operations, and you have all these core capabilities and those things are leverageable across, we think, multiple modalities and urgent care just seemed like a natural fit for us. And, and in many cases, we're co-locating with Aspen. And so now instead of building out a 3,500 square foot location for Aspen and 3,500 square foot location for WellNow, 
Now we can go get great sites, pad sites, typical sites that are that are located maybe for restaurants. And now we're building out 7,000 square feet and have you know great visibility and and you know the site matters and the visibility matters, particularly under a branded strategy. So we're super excited. John's done a great job, as you mentioned. We started with seven locations. We took sort of the year of 17 to figure some stuff out. And now we just did a, a great acquisition um, and, and of hometown urgent care in Ohio. So we bolted them on at the end of the year. Uh, they got a great team as well. And, um, and we'll convert that business into the sort of a well now brand and we're off and running. So let's talk a little bit more about, so, so you've got this uh, co-located uh, urgent care well now, and you've got Aspen. Are they, is it one building? Is it separated? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, well, we're still working through it. The way they are today, is from the, they're, they're definitely separate, but we have the benefit of some of the efficiencies of building it out together. Sure. And you get the great, you get just a great site and great visibility. So it allows us to be more competitive in the market. Um, and and so from my perspective, um, it's just a sort, of, sort of another sort of competitive leg up. We'll work on, we're going to continue to work on strategies where maybe we could either create membership programs or, or loyalty programs in a way that sort of rewards uh, patients of both brands. There's a lot of things that we sort of have to work through in that, but uh, the reality is all the backend stuff is highly leverageable and, and um, we feel really good about the performance of that business as well. Extremely busy. You can imagine all the COVID tests and all the things that are going on there, the volumes are really, really crazy. Um, so we're happy to provide those services that, you know, they're in a tremendous need right now, given the environment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, this this is this one's a new one for me. So medical aesthetics. So tell us about the largest single med spa clinic in the U.S. Why why you decided you know that was a fit as well, and um, kind of what the plans are there. And and again, does it does it relate to to dental? I mean, how or do you just really leverage the support? And you know, maybe you are an HSO now. And <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we, we like the category. We think the category is growing. We think it's resilient. Um, we think people are taking more care, more aware now of, of uh, uh, you know, being able to sort of preserve, you know, their looks or, you know, reduce the aging process or whatever, however you want to start to think about it. And Melissa and the team have done a, a remarkable job. They have a remarkable model. Um, she's a highly passionate, energetic leader that's done an incredible job. And she had, um, she's developed a business that we think is sort of best in class. And, and so when we think about that, we think, okay, how do we really then scale? How do we bring that, that business to scale? And those, again, those are the things that we think we are pretty good at. Um, what's interesting is we also think that there is some of those opportunities when you start to think about facial aesthetics and facial anatomy doctors or dentists are pretty good at that stuff too so yeah. you know we, we i wouldn't be surprised if we do some of that stuff uh in the dental offices but regardless we're we're excited to partner with her uh, we're building our plans out and continuing to find ways to expand it and by the way at the heart of all this too is keep in mind that one of those i think important um foundational things for aspen is there's a, there's a, when we talk about the consumer and the patient model, there's a doctor model as well that's, that's really important. Understanding your providers, understanding how to support them. Uh, you had mentioned the learning and development programs and how we opened up CE across the country. Uh, we think we have a best in class model. Uh, we, we really do. Um, and that's really helped let us scale the way we scale. Um, but if you think about well now, they have providers too. And we get, you know, how we, how we help support them. How do we really think about their career, their opportunities? Same thing with medical aesthetics. You know, there's doctors, there's nurse practitioners, um, there's a medical team there as well. And so it's, yes, you have to understand the front end of the business and the consumer side, but you also have to understand the professional side of the business really well too. And, and blending both of those things together, I think is, those are important insights for us to be able to do it, do it right and be able to scale. Have um, have you seen anything, and you know, across the the different verticals, as far as um, with with COVID, do you, do you see more dentists, more um, you know, on the urgent care side of things, uh, people maybe looking for uh, a larger organization, some somewhere where they have a little bit more support versus, you know, the at least in dentistry, the the traditional um, you know solo practitioner model. I mean, do you, do you feel like there's 
people that are maybe looking for that safety almost. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the feedback we're getting. I mean, the inbound coming in from Denon's right now, particularly, you know, this fall was extremely high and hygienist. Um, and so, you know, we can only surmise that it's, it's partly due to COVID. And, and interestingly is we, we do really well with newer graduates. I mean, I, I just think it's, uh, we, because of our support systems and onboarding, we, we love them uh, and we do really well with them. But what's interesting is we also have a lot of doctors who are coming to us that maybe now been out of school for five, six, seven years. Maybe they've been into a private practice and that practice now has cut back or they really went through a bumpy road. And so you're seeing inbound and that pay, on that side coming in pretty fast as well. And so I think this year, even though we paused for a while as everybody else did in the second quarter uh, and we had, I wanna say we still hired almost 800 dentists um, which is in almost 800 hygienists. It's remarkable. Um, so, um, you know, um, that's an important part of who we are. We think we have a, a model that does differentiate us so people can come in and own their own practice under our flagship and support structure uh, and do it in a way not only where they can be great dentists, but where they can be great leaders. And I always say this to dentists, it's, it's not just thinking with your hands. There's so much more to your license, so much, so many other ways to monetize your license in a way that I think gives you, um, you know, different career choices, and I think that's just part of who we are. Obviously, very busy. What What does twenty twenty one look like? You've, you're you're um, working on probably uh, rolling in, you know, Clear Choice uh, Management Services and how you and how Aspen Dental Management works with Clear Choice. But what, what about, you know, growth opportunities on the implant side, on the Aspen yeah. dental management side, on the urgent care side, uh, <laughs> the med spa? There's a, there's a, there's, there's a lot there. Um, so, you know, listen, I, on, the, on the Aspen side, we just giving the patient volume of practices, the standard of care, big push, big support for, for the practices to do more and more implants. Again, sort of very related to what we're doing with Clear Choice. Um, and we, I think, I think Aspen does roughly 500,000 dentures a year across the system. And you think about all, almost all of those patients are implant patients or opportunities. And so you sit, start to think about those opportunities. So we're standing up, um, our clinical teams are standing up programs to really support our doctors to be great at implants, leveraging technology in a way in the ecosystem, you'll see some releases and some things that we're gonna to bring to market maybe today or tomorrow with some partnerships that we've developed over the last couple of months. Uh, the technology is real, it's coming to market. It's gonna help us, I think, again, continue to differentiate and support our practices in a way that they can provide great service. Uh, doing that with clear choice obviously is, is really critical as well. So implants is a big push. Clear choice, um, listen, it'll largely run independently. Kevin and the team are, are, are wonderful. They understand that business way better than I do. Uh, so we're not gonna get in the way, but we're gonna help support them and continue to find ways to be efficient in the, in the patient funnel, to be efficient on the cost side, um, and in ways that continue to propel that business forward. So we're super excited there. We'll open up, I think 85 Aspen locations. They're gonna open up 12 to 15 clear choice locations. Uh, we're going to open up 20 to 25 well now locations, uh, and then we're going to open up, you know, call it five-ish rejuve locations, you know, three to five rejuve locations. And so there's a lot going on. I don't expect that we'll do any acquisitions necessarily, maybe a couple of tuck in on the urgent care side, but for the most part, it might be pencils down for a bit and continue to sort of work on some of the synergies. Um, listen, we're a big organization now. Uh, we were. Uh, we're the you know we're the absolute largest for sure on the revenue side and and uh, and and we're excited to continue to you know grow across the country. Yeah, exciting, exciting 2020 and yeah. 2021 sounds like it's going to be even more exciting. Let me let me um, uh, end this on um, you know a question I think a lot of people have. It was a tough year for certain groups and and dental practices when it came to same store sales, right? You had yeah. you, you lost four weeks, six weeks, could have been longer depending on geographically where you were. Yeah. Um, you know, what's, what's the outlook like for, for Aspen Dental Management and the practices that you support in, in 2021? What are your thoughts on that? Well, we, we think on a same store basis, our, our, our business will continue to move forward. We have, you know, we work both not only on, um, 
you know, continued new unit growth, but we also work on same store growth. We think it's an important sign of our health and opportunity. We want to make sure we continue. And so, you know, again, we're blessed with being able to sort of comp hire each year. We expect to do it this year as well. Um, and so we look forward to, you know, we'll continue to increase hours, uh, bring in more providers, uh, as I mentioned, implants, clear aligners, all these things that we think are really important to us will continue to drive same store sales. Um, so we're, we're excited. And listen, we, we understand that the, some DSOs, I think, really struggled. In part, I think, is their balance sheet wasn't strong. And so when you have a hiccup, it really does constrain you in a way. And we've been really thoughtful about our balance sheet, how we really think about the health of our business uh, and that of the providers, too. And so that's allowed us, I think, have the flexibility that we've had. Uh, and be opportunistic the way we have in 2020. So again, we're thrilled. We have great, great uh, uh, providers and partner doctors across the country. And, uh, and they and the teams are the ones that really propel this business forward every single day. Excellent. Well, well, great. I, first off, we really appreciate you taking the time today to um, clue us into everything you've been working on over the past couple of years. And, and like I said, in, in 2020, in a year when a lot of people were uh, seeking shelter from the storm, you were you were busy um, doing doing quite a bit, and the, the Clear Choice uh, Management Services acquisition was was big news for you know an organization really that was known for uh, de novo and and not really doing any type of acquisitions. So surprised a lot of people. Yeah, you know, it, to a certain degree, maybe surprised us too. But um, but listen, you know, it's particularly in 2020. But again, I think. Uh, we're really fortunate to be in this category. We got tremendous teams. We got a strong business and allows us to do the things that we do. And I'm highly confident that um, I always say it's sort of like one in one. And I think in this case, we'll make three or four or five. And we're excited to sort of prove that out and demonstrate the, the synergies between, you know, all of, you know, certainly between Clear Choice and Aspen, but really all the healthcare models that we support. So, um, yeah, we're super excited to continue to get at it in 21 and, and look forward to catching up with you again, hopefully maybe in Chicago as, uh, as that new building and training center comes uh, to fruition. Uh, we expect to be in by mid-year, uh, so we're pretty excited for that as well. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. I, the, the, the first one you had is beautiful, so I can only imagine the second one. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's a state-of-the-art training facility. There's like three floors dedicated to training itself and development and Listen, every time we invest in our teams, we get a return. It's that simple. And, and as the providers are sort of the foundation and quarterbacks to everything that happens in the offices, their support teams are really critical as well. And we can't support them enough and, and, and invest in them enough. And so we're excited to really get, uh, get that over the hump and open up this new, what we think will be a best in class training facility um, in the country on, on multiple levels. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Bob Fontana from Aspen Dental Management. And uh, we're still not sure. It's probably more than a DSO now. We're not sure if it's a HSO, but I guess at some point it, it'll be determined, right? It'll be determined. Bill, great to talk with you. Thank you so much for having me. Happy New Year. Hopefully we can catch up live soon. That sounds great. Thanks, Bob. And thanks, everybody, for listening to the Group Dentistry Now show. Until next time, I'm Bill Newman. The Group Dentistry Now show has listeners across North and South America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. If you like our show, subscribe today and please tell your colleagues about us.